Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Stylish Rumble Springtime thing. So, I'm a little late. It's still Wednesday. This is gonna be later in the day on Wednesday because daylight savings time is this week. And everybody's all like, oh, I got to sleep in for an hour. But I have a two year old, so he has no sense of time. And he's just been waking up at 5 a.m. So, in the evenings, I've been too tired to do any of this stuff. And now I'm making a panic last minute episode because that's that's just how life goes so here we are <laughs> so i'm using my brand new version of harmony 15 so nice and we're gonna do some more 15 stuff because it's been taking me forever to get this all done so let's play with the dynamic spring today so i've just got this little setup with a rectangle and some danglies because we're gonna have to make some dangly stuff that seems like a rule. And I want something that's going to be fairly simple. And we're just going to do a simple move across the screen like that. Boop. Of course, when you have it connected in this way, this is what it's going to look like. Let's kind of shorten the duration here. So there you go. That's pretty fast. It's just moving along. I'm going to grab a dynamic spring right here from the library. So this is just the default one. Let's take a look at its ports. So again, we have a switch port. This one works very similarly to the transform limit port wise. So the dynamic spring works very similarly to the transform limit port wise. So here we have our switch port. Here we have a static transform and here we have a force transform which mean the same thing. They're just using different words because that's what that's what that's a harmony standard thing to do. So now we have dynamic transform and up here we have limited transform. So even though they're using completely different words, this port on the right is the one that's going to deal with all the gobbledygook in here. And this one here pertains to this ignore parents thing. So it works exactly the same way as your force transform. It's just called static transform now because reasons. <laughs> salty in the morning when we just put it in default wise let's just play it on a loop and see what we get we what it's doing is delaying there we go because i'm only working on the x right now it's just delaying the x movement so that's kind of neat in my intro i have my letters kind of come up in a, or a sequence way the way i actually had to do that was to have them all move at the same time and then stagger my timing in the timeline. So this would have saved me a bunch of time by doing it this way. This is pretty great. Um, I wonder if we were to hook this guy up like this. So now they're moving together. Can we put a dynamic spring under a dynamic spring? Oh, we can. Look how interesting that is. Whoop a doop. Whoop a doop a doop. Yeah. So now I'm getting a similar effect to my intro. Neat. So dynamic springs can be stacked one on top of each other. That's super interesting. Here, we'll just put them side by side. All right, so that's this port. If we were to put this port in here, a rectangle, see what it's doing is saying to ignore this guy. That's all that's doing. It's It works exactly the same way as our ignore parent's parent's name, which we can set up once we get down there on the list. Boop. So instead of here, let's have it rotate and see what that looks like. Neat. I like or translate just for looking at stuff. So let's play. I have a whole bunch of these and I'm just going to connect springs to all of them. Dude, dude, dude. And I want to play with the timing a little bit. All right. So here, our first dynamic spring, the tension. Let me make sure that I get them in the right order because the tension and the inertia, one does the weight of it and one does the snap of it. Never be afraid to go to your help menu. I know a lot of people who think, oh, I know the software, I'm not gonna look anything up. And that's so silly. How can we be expected to remember all this stuff at, at miserable o'clock in the morning? Nobody should have to expect it all the time. That's just cruel. Okay, so the tension is the snap and the inertia is the weight. So if we put the inertia down, and I'm only using the X, each of these, of course, will correspond to the various attributes. So your X is going to be lefty righty, Y is uppy downy, Z is forwardy backy, scale skew rotate, all those things should be familiar and it's just tension and inertia. We'll turn the inertia on zero for this one. Oh, he's so heavy. Look how slow he is. Interesting. So zero is lower. And if we put it up super high, Oh, then he's going super fast. Let's we'll see if him at zero. The second guy we'll put at 100. I think we're not going to be able to see all of these. I was, I was a little 
optimistic on being able to have five of these go at the same time. I think two is a little bit more visually under control. So the first one has zero inertia and the second one has a hundred inertia. So you can see this guy is just, he's taken a long time to get going. I would have thought it was the other way around. I would have thought 100% inertia would have been heavier. I don't know why that is, but it's pretty easy to, to get this set up. So the next thing we'll do, let's pause this because let's make him a dizzy. Let's put in our unaffected springs since we have them there. And now we will play with the tension. So the tension set to seven. Let's set the tension to zero here. And let's set the tension to like 20. That seems, how high can we set this? And let's see what that does. So the tension of this one is zero and it's not moving at all. Whereas this one, you can see it's boinking back and forth, but staying pretty close to home there. It's not moving around a lot. So let's put this on one tension. So in tension, they say, they refer to it as the snap. So you could think of it as how tight your elastic band is. This is a really loose old crappy elastic band. So it's not really doing a good job of dragging its friend here and this one's a brand new good elastic so can we put decimals in here point five yeah decimals work that's nice to know two whoop whoop nice so this is a fun little thing to play around with to just get a feel for what you want your thing to do if we put the inertia down oh that's neat so this is a really fun little item just playing it with like this. There's plenty of places where just having this much is going to save you time. Like I said, with my opener, where I did those dynamic letters that I did manually, I just took all my stuff and I set it up like this. And then I just staggered the timing on the letters like this. So boop, 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 boop down the line. And now my letters come in one at a time. So it didn't take a ton more time than this one, but I know, any time saved in television is going to be a good thing. So the thing where we have it set up on ears and stuff is not a lot more difficult. Let's get a fresh dynamic spring because this guy is just a mess. Sorry for my like gruff morning voice. <laughs> so what we're going to do is combine the dynamic spring with a two point constraint. That's how we get some of this fun hair follow through stuff. So let's put the spring aside for a second. And hopefully you remember that your two points constraints has, you can put in two little pegs like this, boopy boop, go back to our position here. And both of these can be traveling along with a rectangle. And we're going to put those on our dangly bit. And each of these can be assigned a pivot point like that. So our first pivot is going to be at the top up here. Our second pivot is going to be at the bottom down here. And now using these, we're able to manipulator spring. I don't know if this was a great choice of color. That's a little bit more. There we go. So we're able to just move the bottom. I love two point constraints. I think they're just the funnest. I think you guys noticed that in my other video. So what I'm going to do is just take this dynamic spring and we're going to put it only on this guy, the bottom one. So now when we move as simple as that, we've got a dangly thing that's following so lazy and awesome. <laughs> it's like instant danglies. There's so many places where this has to be animated by hand. It just takes so much more time, either by staggering your keys or by like eyeballing it. It's, it's a very timely con process, especially if you have a lot of hair or something like that. So this little spring, I mean, it, you throw it on, it works. Then it's just a matter of playing with your stuff. So I think maybe I'll turn this down a little bit. Boop. So now it's, oh. We gotta turn it up a little bit because it's the opposite. Whoa, that's worse. <laughs> so this is very uh, volatile. These these numbers. I like if I went by twenty, that seems to be like whoa, calm down. If I put it down to sixty here, all right. So it's definitely gonna take some mulling around in here to get the results you want. It is very volatile, so you don't want to make huge changes. I've just found out. <laughs> There's one thing I was wondering if we can add a deformer in here. I don't know if this is going to work. It really depends on how the math happens, but I think it's a fun experiment. So come along for my experiment and we're just going to put a curve deformer in like this and this might not work at all. Oh, I see. That's interesting. So the offset still works, but then the curve doesn't know what to do with itself. So that's not something that works. 
That's a good thing to know. Um, maybe you could combine them though. So if we took this guy and plugged him into that guy, let's turn this guy off. All right, so we can put a, a deformer in there and then animator deformer. Well, that's nice. Whee! So it's not going to do it automatically, but you can put a deformer underneath this two point constraint plus spring thing, and you're going to be able to do it afterwards. So, you know, that's not too big a deal. It's not the worst thing in the world. Have them do a little bit of work. Let's open up our dynamic spring. For the most part, all these guys are going to be similar. They give you pretty decent starting points, and you're just going to want to nudge a little bit. This checkbox here, match animation on active attributes. So all this means is that you can keyframe your spring. And you're gonna, so you're going to be able to put it on twos and stuff like that, which is so helpful because twos are the best. So once you have a keyframe on your spring, you can select an area, use your little create keyframes on script that just comes with the program, and you can set it on twos. Set this guy on twos as well. And boop, 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 boop. So now whatever you've got it doing, it's not going to move when it doesn't have a keyframe. So it's not going to make your stuff stagger. Often if you have twos and some of your stuff's on ones, it creates like a weird strobing effect. Nobody wants that unless they want that, but we don't want that. So like the active is similar to the active and all the other ones. You can give it a percentage of active. So if this is kind of going a little bit too crazy, but playing down here is just getting you nowhere, then you can put this on about 50% active. And now you're going to get, you're going to get less. 75. So it's a little bit easier to turn it down here, but these are here to play with and that's all right. One thing they mentioned in the help menu, which is why you should read the help menu, is that you can actually just chain these. So I've got a bunch of stuff shared in here already. So let's grab our dynamic spring and share the functions here. Take the keyframe off. So now we can take all these like the spring tension of each of them. We're going to go here, dynamic spring, and we can choose which one we want to control all that. So let's say we want the tension X to control everything. Then our tension Y here, we can look down our list and find our tension X and connect it. And then down here, a curve spring, our tension X and connect it. So now we can set these to local these top two and whatever we change our attention X to, it's going to change all of these down here at the same time. So I think that's a huge time saver. I kind of wish there was a button where it was just like link to X. If you guys can add that in, that'd be sweet. <laughs> but you could set one up and then save it in your template library. And then you could have like a linked tension spring, which would be sweet. You like my critical role mug? Oh, coffee, sweet coffee. The other thing in here is going to be our ignore parents. So just like in our other video, which had some other thing in it. <laughs> morning time. I'm so good at morning time. Um, you're going to want to look up your chain to your master peg or whichever one you don't want this affected by. Because of course, if you're setting up pose, your poses using your master peg and then your springs are doing all this crazy stuff, that's significant. Also, if you have to do some crazy head action, um, that is really just manic, like driving your springs crazy, then you could grab that head peg and plug it in the center here or take the name, copy it, put it here, and then just slam up your ignore parents to make sure it encompasses that number. So this gives you more control over what's doing what, because maybe you only want the head to control the hair. Maybe you don't want the torso to control the hair, depending on the action. That's a thing. Oh, and of course we can take our transformation limit as well, and we can put that in here. So all of these new nodes can stack on top of each other in just the best way. So we're just going to turn out our rotate off. And now we're going to copy an apple pen, apple pen, apple pen, apple pen. So copy our pivot, paste our transport position. And so now if this guy is rotating, our dangly is not going to rotate. And let's, let's just do a test of that. So I'll just move it and rotate it. And we'll see. And let's turn the spring up because I've got it turned down a little bit. So let's 100% active. Now you can see it's taking the the movement that's going across, but we, we've got this limit on there that's not letting it take the rotation. So the rotation's not going down through. If we take this off, then we get this. 
So that's a very significant difference. So putting this transform limit on there lets it dangle. Putting the dynamic spring on top of a two point constraint means that the anchor point is not going to swing, but this lower part will swing. So let me just zoom in here so you can see exactly what I've got where. So the transform limit is limiting the rotation. The dynamic spring is only happening to this bottom part of this guy down here, this lower one. And of course you can still animate it, which is amazing. And then we've got a regular peg underneath, which we can move as well. And then there's our drawing. So once you create a dynamic spring setup like this that you really like, you can group it and just, you know, call it spring. You're going to have to open this up and because when you group ports like this, if it has a lot of stuff in it, it, it tends to really like to connect them to your multi-port in. So you can disconnect these all and then make the decision. You can put all of your uh, switches, for example, up here. So if you want to connect a switch outside your group like that, you can grab a constraint switch and connect it in through here. And so now you could turn your stuff on and off using your constraint GUI. So now none of it is working. It just turns it off. So if you have lag problems when you're using this dynamic stuff, you could put in a GUI and then turn it off. I think that would probably improve your lag. You could also put in some sort of a display thing or a gate system. We could, we could work on gates in the future. So I'm hitting about the 20 minute mark. And I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> All right. But now that we've got our little spring thing connected, if we have a bunch of dangles, so I've just copied and pasted this dangly guy over here. I'm going to copy my spring. It doesn't want to alt sneak. I think it's just like, man, I got too much stuff to think about. Like, give me a break. I can't alt sneak my group. Is that any group? It won't let me alt sneak any of my groups. Is that an option? That's something I'm going to have to look into. So I'm going to have to manually shimmy my groups in here. Boop, boop, boop. But now we've got a series of danglies. So you never, I never need to rebuild this again. I'm going to copy this I'm going to go down to my little work place where I have my favorite stuff and I'm going to paste in my spring. I'll just call it spring. Boop. So now whenever I need a spring group, I just drag in my spring group and it's all set up just the way I know I like it for these tassely guys. Wee. Right. So now I've got my little template. Never, always have like if you're a rigger let me just bring this up here so you can see it so i've just got my asdf that i like to haul in i have gone over this in the past and then i've got find and replace script so i can type in asdf rename it whatever i want bloop and it's going to change all of them on time so that way if i need five or six groups all my attributes in here are working the way I, that i want them to my animate using animation tools is off all those super things and then i can name them all at one time fa -fa, fa -fa, fa -fa, fa -fa. i've got my character template a pass-through composite i don't grab like bitnet composites and then change it don't do things twice look look at all the pass-through composites yeah <laughs> layer selectors i've got all those named and and ordered just the way i like them i like using layer selectors um and now i've got my spring so whenever i'm rigging i've got my little kit down here of things that i like to use all the time i've got a couple little custom scripts that i found along the way and i've got everything that i need so hopefully you're feeling better about this dynamic spring it's super powerful it's got so much utility and it's not too tricky to use the, the hardest part i think is just taking the time to do your setup like this. So take one piece at a time, part, start with the two points constraint and then figure out exactly how that's working. And once you're comfortable with that, check out your transform limit, figure out how that's working and then check out your dynamic spring. I think it's a good order to play with them in. That's just the order that I chose to explain them in my videos. And then combining them afterwards is a little bit less daunting because you're, you're doing a piece by piece. You're not starting with a big thing. All right, so thanks for dropping by. I don't have any news yet on new things, but there'll be new news soon. Oh, just thanks for everybody who sends me like nice emails and comments and stuff. I've gotten such good feedback and it just makes my day when you guys like and do and leave little comments that I'm helping and stuff. Thanks internet for bolstering my self-esteem. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do work work now. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. I just sat there for like a minute like, Mur. 
what do I do next? But like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you next time, hopefully while I'm awake and full of coffee and wonderful.